For the second time in 2020, Darktable has had a massive overhaul. The list of things that are new is just astonishing. And so I thought that rather than try and smash this all into one video, I'm going to break it up into four videos. So over the next four episodes, we are going to look at all of the new goodies that Santa has brought us. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 79 of Understanding Darktable. Moving on with all of the new features for Darktable 3.4. I really should have put this in the first episode because I actually love this. The module groups in the darkroom view have been completely overhauled. Let's randomly pick an image here. What do I, yeah, let's just go with this. This will do. So up here, we have our active modules, our base, our tone, our color, our correction, and our effect. Now, if you click on the hamburger, you will see there is a new menu here. We have all modules, default modules, deprecated modules, search only, which we discussed in episode 78, uh, workflow beginner, workflow display referred, workflow scene referred. And right down the bottom here, we've got manage presets. Now, before I click on this, I want you to notice that down in the bottom right hand corner, the button that we have always had in the past, which was more modules, that is now gone and good riddance to you. I am really happy to see that gone, to be honest, because I thought it was a just a horrible way. Like I understood that you didn't want every single module visible by default, because for a new user, that would have been absolutely terrifying to find, you know, 70 modules in the group and you just go, ah, where do I start? But now we click on manage presets and we get this. This is fantastic. This is the ability to create your own custom groups of modules as they appear over here under the histogram. This is really funky. So let's just start by looking at modules default. So we can see that there is a technical group, a grading group, and an effects group. This is a built-in read-only preset. Duplicate it if you want to make changes. So what I did was I simply went and created my own set of module groups for the modules that I like to use. Now, if you want to do that, all you do is click on this plus icon here at the bottom of the left hand side, add new empty preset. That will get a name of new underscore one. Here where it says preset name, you can now name that. I will just call this episode, what are we doing? 79. <laughs> and what we can do now is click on the plus icon here beside module groups to create a new group. We will call this base. We can click on the icon to the left of the field where we put the name and we can choose any one of a handful of default items. So I'll just use the base icon, that'll do. And then click on plus and you can now choose what modules you want to have in your base group. So you might say, well, I want the color calibration and I want the white balance module and I might want filmic RGB although really that'd be a tone thing. Let's just leave it at that. So now that's our first group. We can create a second group and we might call this tone. So we'll go tone and we'll change the icon to be, yeah, tone icon. That makes sense. And then we want to add filmic RGB and you get the idea. You will also notice that once you have added a module to a group, that module no longer appears in the list when you bring up the list. So you'll see here, Filmic RGB does not appear in this list because you've already got it in the group. So that prevents you from trying to add the same module to a group twice, because let's face it, that would be silly. However, it does not prevent you from adding Filmic RGB in another group. So you can have the same module loaded in multiple groups if you want to, but you can't add it twice to the same group. 
Once you have done all of this, you can simply click away to another preset. That name will then update and you can go back to it at any time. You can modify it, add things, remove things, do whatever you like. When you are finished, you simply close the window. Now, at the moment, it's still using whatever was the last preset you had selected, which in my case is my Bruce preset. So I click on the hamburger. We can see that Bruce is selected because it, the text is bold. I can now click F79 and there's my new custom groups. How cool is that? I love it. So I can go back to my Bruce set. I can now go back to manage presets. I can now click on the X button beside F79 and that will say, do you really want to delete this preset? Yes, I do. And it's gone. That is way cool. Devs, beautiful work. I love it. Next up, export print sizes. This is gorgeous as well. So let's suppose I had finished processing this image and I'm ready to print it out. I type L to go back to my light table view and in the export dialog box, you will now see under global options, set the size and there is the option for pixel size. So you can just enter in the number of pixels. So if you're outputting for a digital display, you might say, well, I run a 1920 by 1080 monitor and I'm creating wallpaper for my computer. So I just want to export it at 1920 pixels wide. Makes sense, right? Or in centimeters for print, in inches for print, or by scale. So if it's centimeters for print, it will default to the centimeter value that your actual file represents at 300 dots per inch. So my files being 24 megapixel, are, they come out at 16.26 centimeters on the long edge at 300 DPI. If you want to upscale those, you would need to allow upscaling and you could then say, I want that to be 25 centimeters. And then you can export your image and it will be rescaled to 25 centimeters at 300 DPI. Then we can look at inches. And if you've already entered a value, that value will automatically recalculate. So if you're a person who, let's say, thinks in inches, but the print lab that you want to send out to says, oh, we need it in, you know, 30 centimeters in metric, then you can just go to the centimeters option, go make it 30 centimeters, and then you can switch over to inches and see, oh, that's 11.8 inches. Cool. So you've got yourself a calculator in Darktable. How good's that? And then finally, by scale. This is really cool. If you hover over the text field, it can be an integer, a decimal number, or a simple fraction. So in other words, I can go one forward slash 10 to export an image that is one tenth the size of the original. Now, my original image is 6048 by 4024. So if I send this out to my desktop, that'll do, and export, and yes, and then if I bring up my desktop and we have a look at this image and we look at the size, and there it is, 605 pixels by 403 pixels, just based off a fraction, one tenth. How cool is that? I love it. So you can use a fraction, you can use a decimal. I want, you know, one quarter size, so 0 0.25, or you can just use one for full size. And if you have any text value in here other than one, let's say you had 56, because you want it 56 times the size of the original, uh, you can simply middle mouse click over the text field and that will reset it to one. That's pretty cool as well. So that's the export selected module. Love it. And finally for this episode, the over and under exposure indicators. They have now been renamed the clipping indicators because the old 
under and over exposed indicators only reflected clipping for luminosity. They did not reflect clipping for saturation. In other words, out of gamut errors. Now it does all of it. So if you right click on the icon for the clipping indicators, you will see clipping preview mode, any RGB channel, full gamut, luminance only or saturation only. That's really cool. So you can check independently whether your clipping is saturation related, therefore a gamut problem, or is it just a luminosity problem where you're clipping blacks or clipping whites. You can also set the color scheme, which I think you could do before, and you can adjust the lower threshold and the upper threshold for where the clipping indication should start to kick in. Okie dokie. That is going to do it for episode 79. You can understand now why I broke this up into four episodes, right? <laughs> there is so much new stuff here. It's amazing. I love it. All right. That's going to do it for this one. And I will catch you in the next one.